and do not cut off the ties of kinship, verily Allah is ever a watcher over you. He says, O oh, you who believe, be conscious of Allah and always speak a word that is direct and true. He will rectify your affairs and forgive your sins. He will rectify your affairs and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved a great success. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to congratulate you. You are two thirds of the way finished with this blessed month. We have now entered the last 10 nights and days of Ramadan. And so now it is time for us to exert ourselves and get the most we can out of these last 10 days and nights. Aisha said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to strive more in worship during Ramadan than he strove in any other time of the year, and he would devote himself more in worship in the last 10 nights of Ramadan than he strove in the earlier part of the month. We let it Muslim. So any deficiencies, any shortcomings, perhaps you know you have you know this good to start in Ramadan ambitious, perhaps you're short on certain areas that you didn't meet, now it's time to exert yourself. Exert yourself and hit the mark. Exert the self, exert yourself and reach your goals for the month. Ibn Jawzi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the great scholar of Islam said, when the race horse knows that is nearing the ending of the race, it exerts all efforts to win the race. Do not allow the race horse to be more clever than you. For verily, these are judged by their conclusions. So if you did not do well with welcoming Ramadan, then perhaps you would do better bidding it farewell. And concerning this statement, Ibn Taymiyyah Ta'ala said, the lesson lies in perfection of the conclusion of a thing. The lesson lies in perfection of conclusion of a thing, not in the shortcomings in the beginning. And Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, improve your performance in what is left of time, and you will be forgiven for that which has already passed. So take special care of the time you have left, because you do not know when your soul will be turned over to Allah's mercy. So in these last 10 days, 10 days and nights, we have to, wherever you look at yourself, and wherever you see deficiencies, now is the time to correct them, inshallah. And there are numerous noble things that you can do in these last 10 nights. And I just want to remind the brothers and remind myself first. And the key here is in the implementation. It's in the implementation. Perhaps the hadith I'm going to recite or the ayat I'm going to recite, you've heard them before. You may know them better than me. But the key for all of us, the success of all of us, is in the implementation of these things. The first thing is strive as much as you can to complete the Quran. Read as much Quran as you can. But don't just read the Quran. Contemplate it. Reflect upon it. Reconnect with it. Allah says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زالتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون. We hear from this verse Allah says the believers are only those who when Allah's name is mentioned they feel a fear in their hearts and when his verses are recited to them it increases them in their faith and they put their trust in their Lord. I want to remind the brothers, please, to mute your phones or turn the volume off on your phones. Jazakallah khair.
And and part of the and part of the Quran should involve standing in the prayer for Qiyam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radallahu anha, I mean, they said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would stand in prayer in Qiyam for so long that the skin of his feet would crack. And so she asked him radallahu anha, she said, oh, Messenger of Allah, why do you do this? While well, you have been forgiven of your former and latter sins, he said, should I not be a grateful servant to Allah? We learn in Bukhari and Muslim. Here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, out of his gratitude to his Lord, would stand until his feet would swell, his feet would crack, he exerted himself. This is a lesson for us. Why? Because we break our, our, our fast and we're tired, right? We're sleepy. We live in a non-Muslim society. Everything else is still going on. You still have to go to work. It's difficult. It's difficult. You still have to open your shops. You ride your boss tells you to be there at 8 in the morning. You have an important. It's difficult. You acknowledge that. But strive as much as you can to get the benefit of the night. And again, I'm, and, and most need the reminder. But hopefully, we all benefit from the example of the Prophet. The third thing that is very important is Ektakaf. What is Ektakaf? It is the process of isolating oneself in the masjid for some period of time and doing dhikr and reading Quran and taking account, one account of their deeds. Aisha, radiallahu anha, related to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to engage himself in Ittikaf during the last 10 nights of Ramadan until he passed away. So it was his, it was his sunnah. And his wives would follow the practice after him. So the prophetic family in the last days of Ramadan, they would isolate themselves, cut off all the social things, cut off all the distractions. They've already been fasting and praying and take it to another level. So they isolate themselves and they sit in the masjid and they take themselves to account. They reckon their deeds. They reckon their sins. They reflect upon Allah's mercy. They recite his book. They call to him. They remember him. And the ulama say that the best thing for the believer to do is make it to have the last 10 days. Stay in the masjid. If you cannot do it though, it's difficult for many of us. Plan on doing etikaf in the masjid at least a day or at least a night. Some time. This is very important for us. And some of the ulama also say for the sisters, if you cannot, for instance, get away from your family obligations, this includes yourself in a room in the home for some period of time. The point is, in these last 10 days, take account of yourself. This is, this is again, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Huraira said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to observe at the calf every year during Ramadan for 10 days. And in the year in which he passed away, he observed at the calf for 20 days, along with the related Bukhari. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was chained to the masjid in his time. And he was the best among us. He was the best of creation. And he took the time to seclude himself for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So what about us? We're falling short in so many areas. So do your best, if possible, to make it the calf. Alhamdulillah, you can make it here. There's a process with the administration of the masjid, and uh, you sign up, and you can stay here, inshallah. Number four, I mentioned this in a previous khutbah, but it actually, if I mentioned it every khutbah, it still wouldn't be enough. And that is trying to catch the little khutbah. We spoke a lot about it already, 
So I'll just say two things and move to the next point. Aisha, radiallahu anha, learned that the Prophet sallallahu said, look for Laylatul Qadr on and on the odd number nights during the last 10 days of Ramadan. We laid in Bukhari. And as I mentioned previously, Aisha, radiallahu anha, she said, oh messenger of Allah, oh messenger of Allah, what should I do if I believe that I can't live the cover? And he said, say, Allahumma inna ka'afum tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. It's a beautiful dua. Oh Allah, verily you are afu. And in, this, this translation is not very, it's, hard. It, it's, it's more than just forgive. Because Allah subhanahu wa wipes away your sins as if they did not exist. And he loves to do it. He loves to do it. You love to do it. So forgive me. So in all of the nights, we'll ask, ask that, ask that. Of course, alhamdulillah, the, 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 the people leading the Qiyam will do that on our behalf. But do it yourself too. Allahumma inna ka'afu tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. If you have not memorized that, memorize it. But a small note about memorizing it. Um, oh, there's many different uh, apps on your phone, like this is a Muslim, and the, the, the dua is there. The dua is there. If you need help finding it, see me after the khutbah, inshallah. The next issue is Sadaqa, 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 Sadaqa. Spend your money. Give. Every day, every night, Ramadan, give something. One dollar, ten dollars, spend. That, that donation you've been holding back, give it now. Give it now. You've been contemplating, what am I going to do? I have my savings is decreasing. Give it now. The law tells you that the charity does not diminish wealth. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Sadaqa extinguishes sin as water extinguishes fire. And he وسلم, also says, Allah offers relief on the Yom Qiyam. For those who give sadaqa, the believer's shade on the day of resurrection will be the sadaqa. Allah what for little intermediate. And anytime you feel yourself, anytime you feel yourself, you're about to give some sadaqa, and you start to hold back, say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Allah says in the Quran, الشيطان يعيدكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشة. See? Shaytan, he promises you poverty and calls you to indecency. والله يعيدكم مغفرة منه وفضلة والله واسع عليه. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he promises you Forgiveness in not. And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise and all knowing. So you're about to get that donation. You start thinking about, but what if? What if? Let it go. Unbeat <laughs> Spirit from what we have given you. And I want to direct the brothers, since there's many things you can spend on. But I want to direct to three things. Three things. This is not exclusive. The first thing is this masjid. Spit on this masjid. Wallahi, I mentioned this before. I remember coming to this masjid when it was a, the, the roof was leaking and there was no carpet and the pipes had been stripped and there was no electricity. Wallahi. 
And we walked in the basement, and the basement was flooded because all the leaks and all the things went to the basement. Like a foot of water was in the basement. A lot of people said, I don't know what those brothers are doing versus in that masjid. What the leadership of Master Topia doing versus in that masjid. But those brothers and sisters, may Allah reward them. They had vision better than many of us. And you know what's remarkable about, about this masjid? I came to a fundraiser one day for this masjid. And it was mostly all Somalis. It's important. And they weren't rich people. Many of the people that day were not rich people. And the sisters started taking money out of their, their, their purses. And the brothers, the taxi drivers pulled up. He put money out of his pouch. And the entire brother came and he took some money out of his savings. And the widow came and she gave a few bucks. And the shop owner came and he gave a few dollars. And Allah multiplied and multiplied it. And now you have this question. See what Allah does? So when you see in your life the miracles of Allah, when you see in your own life what is holding you back, when you see in your own life the seemingly impossible, in the seemingly impossible becomes possible because people gave a dollar. Allah multiplies it. But Shaitan, what does he do? He promises you property. That's number one, the message. Number two, those of you who are immigrants, I know you already do this. Those of you who are immigrants, send money back to your countries. It's very important. Send money back to your countries. Yeah, we're going to invest here. You guys know we do a lot of work here. And I'm not an immigrant. But I'm telling you as immigrants, send money back to your countries. Why? Because the need is great there. The need is great in those countries. And many of you know better than me. The many of you know better than me how much the little $10 you give, the $20 you give, you send back there, it stretches a long way. Right? So give every month. Every day in the last 10 days of Ramadan, send something back to your country. 10, 25, 5, $1. SubhanAllah. The Prophet said, save yourself from the hellfire, even with a half a day. That means nothing, nothing, is in, in, uh, uh, nothing that you spend in the sight of Allah is, is, is small. See, we think it's small, but it's not small. Second thing about that issue, going back to the message. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will build a house in paradise for the person who builds a masjid for the sake of Allah, even if the masjid is the size of a bird's nest. <laughs> Look at that investment. So what that means is even if you leave here, you have 50 cents, a bird's nest worth of money, I think. A bird's nest worth the money, Allah is going to give you a pair, a, 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 a mansion. So don't forget about the masjid and don't forget about your, your, your country. Last thing. Last thing is that we have a lot of poor Muslims and non Muslims, but I want to emphasize the Muslims today. We have a lot of poor Muslims in America. We do. We don't talk about it that much. As you all know, alhamdulillah, I'm heavily involved in Barak Muslim charity. We have a lot of poor Muslims. They can't pay their bills. Widows, husband died. We just had a sister, uh, you know, families who, who lose people. And now they gotta take care of children. That's a reality in our community. That's a reality in our community. So give, give, give. For whatever you have. If you're poor, give a little bit of what you have. If you're a student, give a little bit of what you have. If you're wealthy, give a lot. Two more things in the clothes, inshallah.
dua. Make a lot of dua. Abu Huraira, ready Allah Mu'an, related that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when the last third of the night remains, our Lord, the Glorious One, descends towards the heavens and of the earth and proclaims, who is it that supplicates for me? And I grant his supplication. Who is it who begs for me anything, begs me for anything, and I grant it to him? Who is it who seeks my forgiveness the moment, and, and, and I forgive him? Related to Bukhari So now is the time in this month, ask the law, ask the law, ask the law, day and night. Jabir, related that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every night, every night, there is a special time during which whenever a Muslim asks Allah of any good related to this life or the hereafter, it will be granted to him. And this moment comes every night, related to Muslim. So ask Allah subhanahu Ask them and train yourself. This is, this, is, this is one of the examples of tawakkul. Every deed, even if you think you're capable, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that he is your guardian, he is your wakil. So every deed, even deeds you take for granted, ask Allah, call upon him, ask for his assistance, ask for his help, beg him to help you. Because it is through him, that you get success. And this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's methodology. That's why sometimes you pick up like a book on um, um, a car. She says, SubhanAllah. <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was pretty much always remembering Allah. In fact, in an authentic hadith, he, 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 he told the Sahaba what to say with the wives when it's happening during intercourse. And they said, Yah, 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 Rasulullah, we get rewards? We have intercourse with our wives? He said, will you not be punished if you, if, if, if you commit haram with a woman you're not married to? The Prophet Sallallahu was always remembering Allah, always calling upon Allah. A few times he wasn't like going to the bathroom. But for the most part, always calling. So he's telling us, even in things that you think, I got this, Seek Allah's help. Because it is Allah who's in control. And how many of us find our end or find trouble in the things we take for granted? How many people, for instance, who are expert drivers die on the highway? It's the truth. So find yourself always remembering Allah and calling on Him during this time. The last thing, and I've emphasized this point several times in the, in the Juma'an. And that we as Muslims need to take account of ourselves. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amu taqu laha wa tanzu nafsum ma qaddam al-dira. Famous ayah. Wa taqu Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. Let every soul in these last ten days look forward to what he has set forth in Ramadan. What have I set forth in Ramadan? Have I set forth the Quran? and good deeds, and charity, helping the widows, kindness to my neighbors. Have I volunteered in the masjid? Have I given my money to things we should be looking forward towards? Have I sent money back home if I have it? Have I helped the orphans? All things we should be striving for. Look forward to that. Like, like you look forward, like you count everything else. This is the time to do that. So brothers and sisters in Islam, again, congratulations. Alhamdulillah. The month is a beautiful month. You've fasted, you've read Quran, you've given charity. Now it's time to take it up another notch. Now it's time to exert yourself even harder. Now it's time to cash in on Allah's blessings. 
Now it's time to catch the little cover. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who get the best of this month. And may he subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are most generous in this month. And may he make us amongst those who stand for long periods of time during the last 10 days of this month. Ten, last 10 nights of this month. And may he make us amongst those who gather our families with us in this task and bring our families along with us. And may he, may he forgive all of our sins during, these, during this month. And may he multiply all of our good deeds during this month. And may he make this month a month that opens up the doors of Jannah for us. Okay. And may he make this month a month that locks the gates of Jahannam for us. And may he make this a time where, where the Muslims are freed of their depression and their anxiety. And may he help the Muslims in everywhere the Muslims are struggling. May he help the Muslims in Somalia, help the Muslims in Palestine, Afghanistan, Burma, India, Yemen, everywhere, any place I did not mention. May he help them and may he bring peace to the lands of the Muslims. وربنا حبنا من أزواجنا وذريتنا كرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك في الرجيم اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك في الرجيم أقيم الصلاة Allah, 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 Allah,